Um, so this is um, Exhibit G's and the time cards. That's what we'll be talking about today. My name is Ryan Broussard. I am the VP of Sales and Production Incentives uh, for Media Services. I've done a few of these webinars in the past, mostly focusing on incentives, but today we're focusing on Exhibit G's and time cards and SAG AFTRA and all of that good stuff. So uh, I'm gonna get right into it. Um, so uh, yes, start, work, finish. Everybody sent in those uh, <laughs> that answer. A lot of people saying it was too easy. Give them a break. Maybe I'll throw in some more trivia as we go through and test the waters. Uh, but I had to I had to give up a softball just in the beginning there. Come on. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's get going. Once again, my name is Ryan Broussard. I'm going to be kind of emceeing today, but Roger Jones is going to be the presenter and showing you all the ins and outs of Showbiz, Time Card, SAG, AFTRA today, and breaking down the exhibit G and everything you need to know if you're paying SAG and why this becomes a benefit to you um, as you're paying SAG, AFTRA on your shows. So with that said, I'm gonna introduce Roger. Roger is our product manager of Showbiz, Time Cards, and other accounting software. Um, he's a veteran of payroll accounting himself. He's, he's been out in the field like a lot of the people that are joining us today, so, his feedback, your feedback are one and the same. He understands what people are going through and what the um, what the advantages of using the program that he actually helped develop and give input in um, what we'll, you'll see today. So, I mean, he's, his experience and everything has poured into this, and he's dealing with shows from the biggest of big shows and television shows you see on TV and the movie screens to the smallest of small. So we're working with independent studios, everything that are using Showbiz Time Cards. So, Roger, thanks for uh, being with us today and um, looking forward to, to chatting with you. Good morning, thank you very much. Um, so, the first thing we're gonna look at right off the bat, we're gonna dump into the actual time card itself, the SAG after a time card. Um, what makes it different than a regular time card? What are we looking at here um, compared to what people might be saying in just a regular daily time sheet? So, um, Roger, I'm just going to dive in right off the bat with looking at this thing. And look, I'm not an accountant. I don't come from that world. So some of the things I'm saying are what the audience is saying already or the questions they have. So feel free to send in, once again, your questions. Nothing's too silly or you feel like it's too easy or you should know that. Don't feel embarrassed. Send that over and we'll be talking about that today. So we're looking at this time card. It's a little weird. Right, because I'm looking at, I see, you know, on that top line, Roger's playing himself, which I know he can do very well. Um, but I see that, you know, the, the times are kind of backwards, right? We have like 10:20 in the front, we have a 9:50, it looks like 55 in the back. So that's a little wonky. That's a little different. Um, it, Roger, is that is that that's unique to the SAG DAFRA, the way they have that set up on their time card? That's correct. Um... This was designed actually by Screen Actors Guild quite some time ago. The reason why is what you're really looking at, what is an Exhibit G? An Exhibit G is basically just, it's the performer's time card. What happens here is you're basically saying a day's worth of work for all your performers. And what happens is they enter the in and out times and they sign it. Now, the reason why they did this is it made it easier to be able to see um, if you look at work time, here's your in time, here's your out time. Oh, here's when you were dismissed. Uh, here's when you took your meal. If you did travel, here's when you started, here's when you left. It was easier a lot of times for the performers to look at this really quickly because remember, they're looking at the sheet and then they're si signing off on it in the end. So that's why they designed mm -hmm. it because it made it easier for them to be able to understand it and not necessarily for an okay. account. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, because there are some unique things that are specific to SAG AFTRA. And I'll throw this trivia out there too while people are still giving me grief about the SWF. Uh, if you can send me the actor in the questions uh, form, if you know the actor in the early 30s that kind of propelled the reason SAG and the unions kind of had these, um, these rules implemented into the time card to make sure that people aren't uh, being taken advantage of with their time. So send me that if you know the answer to that. Really um, so the SWF, Roger, because I'm looking at that, people, yes. obviously everybody knows that but me, um, but I see SW, SWF right there next to the characters 
and I see W, I see WF. What, what, what are the other ones and what's that pertaining to? That's actually just the work designation. In fact, here's a little tip about start, work, finish, is that as a true day player, somebody who literally came on for just one day and left that same day. So that's a little trick. Maybe a lot of people don't realize that's a true day player. That person, um, i.e. the bank teller, was only there for just one, you know, one scene perhaps. Um, and they're only needed for one day. So that's their work designation because they just did one day's worth of work. Um, if you look above that, the bank manager, they worked finished. In other words, they worked another day prior to this one and now they're finishing. The other designations are work. These people are continuing to work day after day because we are looking at literally Thursday today in a given work week. Remember, this is representing normally if you're gonna have a Monday through Friday schedule, this is representing one day. So you're gonna see five more of these for people who continue to work unless they work finish or start work finish on a day. Gotcha, gotcha. And once again, I just wanna clarify for everybody listening because we're getting a lot of questions about this. This is the exhibit G. Roger has not jumped into the showbiz SAG AFRA software yet. This is, Roger, correct me if I'm wrong, because somebody was asking this. The actor fills this out or the accountant fills this out. Who's filling this out? They, they want generally, to know. Generally, it's, it's the DGA. Um, one of the assistants will go around, and what they will do is they'll have a clipboard, and then they will fill out the times for the actor. The actor will review it, i.e., that's why we want to put those things together. We talked about that earlier. So it's easier for them to see the in and out times. And then at the far end, you see they actually sign off on that day. So this is the Got truly it. the actor's time card. They don't fill it out themselves. Somebody fills it out for them. They review it and they sign it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, a lot of people asking questions about it. Because once again, as I stated, this is unique compared to your regular crew time card. Correct. Let's look at the some of the other unique things on here, Roger. Is, uh, the meals, for example. I'm used to seeing first second meal, but then I have an ND meal there. Um, that seems a little different. Can you explain that? Correct. Um, understanding what an ND meal, let me explain what an MPV is, which is at the far end next to the performer signature. An MPV is a meal penalty violation. Essentially, in our industry, it's six hours. What happens is you must, within six hours, give somebody a break in that literally they must actually walk away from their position for that amount of time. Now, it's not just the actors, it's pretty much everybody in a union, and even non-union California, non California requires this. They literally must wake or walk away from their job. Um, it's not like, you know, you can give them some food, they must literally walk away from the job for that amount of time. It's half an hour minimum, one hour maximum. What happens is if you do not actually give them the break, then what happens is you are violating that six hour rule and a meal penalty violation is now occurring. Now, what happens is, is, is the, there's the amount, that's the penalty, the penalty is an amount of money and that money escalates the longer you don't give them a meal or a break. So what happens is, um, once you understand what a meal penalty is, then there are rules that you can avoid those meal penalties. Um, one of them is, is the ND. ND basically stands for non-deductible meal. Sometimes people say it's NDB and NDD, which is breakfast and or dinner. And that's fine. It could be first meal, second meal. That's fine. Most shows are only allowed to do it in one, once uh, and per, per calendar day. Um, and then what happens is the idea is it's non-deductible from their work hours, but you can deduct the meal penalty if, for example, a hot meal is supplied, and that hot meal needs to be supplied two hours before call, or it's two hours before wrap, and it must be a hot meal. It cannot just be food from the craft services truck. It literally must be actual hot food that's delivered from a truck. And then I was gonna ask that, because that's, that's, that. that's unique. That's unique, yes. you know what I mean? That's, well, that's very interesting, because I was gonna say what suffices as a meal, you know? Correct. It's actually your feet. They're still working, but you're actually giving them a hot meal so they can take a break for 15 minutes and get something in their, you know, get something to eat and, um, you know, they can get back to work real quickly. Gotcha. Gotcha. And then, you know, we're actually getting a lot of, by the way, everybody, we, we see your questions. I see them. We are going to try to get to them. Some of the questions that people are sending in, we will hit as we go through it. So 
right? I don't call out your question right away. Don't don't feel like you're being missed. Um, but I am getting a lot of questions about the travel time, about you know what dictates when that happens, how to do it, the breakdown of it, which is which is interesting to see uh, multiple people people asking about that. Um, do you want to just give an overview of the travel time, Roger, about what sure. that comes, uh, encapsulates? Sure. What happens essentially is it depends. Is the actor actually going to set of their own accord, they're driving themselves, or maybe somebody's driving them, or is production physically t picking them up from wherever they are? Usually it's a hotel, and then taking them to the actual stage, and then later on they take them back. Well, that is considered work time uh, because they're actually starting work, right? Because they're actually getting in the car, you're actually starting your job. Now, the nice thing about it is even though they're paid, there are rules around that, which I'll show you in the SAG Cards program. For example, they don't get double time. Say, for example, they were in double time in the day. If they um, happen to be in double time for that day um, and they're traveling, you don't have to pay that. Travel time is paid at time and a half. And the program will do that for you, by the way, which is really nice. That's gotcha. really helpful. Well, well, basically, they're being paid for traveling because they're being picked up and taken from and or to location. I see. I see. And yeah, I mean, that brings up, I mean, that's a good, that's kind of a good point, a segue, because I know we really want to get into the program, but I want everybody to see this, you know, look at this, kind of absorb it in your brain for a second, because Roger's going to take this. This is just an Exhibit G, and he's going to take this. I get a lot of people asking about, you know, I've seen the hours broken out military time on the cards and stuff like that. We're going to talk about all of that, okay? So, Roger, I'm going to hand over the reins to Roger to show the program shortly, unless anybody has any questions about what they're seeing just on the Exhibit G before we move on. And look, I know we're moving at kind of a fast pace, a fast pace, guys, but, you know, we want to make sure we cover this ground and make sure we get into it. So um, any other questions about just the Exhibit G and what we're looking at here? Um, somebody asked if there's a radius with regards to the travel. Um, Roger, I don't, I don't know if that's something you might, might know. I don't know if, if that, if there's something yeah. that, uh, yeah, in I the can rules. Go over individually with the customer, if need be. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, is this, somebody asked, would this be the same time card that would be used for TV and movie? I, I believe it would be, right, Roger? That's correct. In fact, if you look at it actually along the tops, USS production type, MP motion picture, TV, and a MOW for me the week, industrial or other. So it's literally for all types of SAG after. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's uh, then let's let's get going because we're getting a lot of questions, and I think a lot of them we're gonna we're gonna hit. Um, a lot of people are asking about the SAG rules, Roger, and I know that's something you can kind of show us in the program, to where maybe uh, everybody listening doesn't need to know it backwards and forwards. Um, before they get going, and, and maybe we can make their lives a little easier. So once again, we're going to show you guys Showbiz Time Cards, SAG-AFTRA, um, and this is a program that, you know, the industry is using, you know, worldwide, and um, it's it's going to make your life easier with regards to breaking down a SAG-AFTRA time card. So I'm going to give Roger control here. So just bear with us just a second so we can see his screen. And then we're going to see the actual program running. Keep in mind, he did pre-fill out some of the information here that you just saw on that Exhibit G. So just, just keep that in mind. And Roger, you know, let us know what we're looking at here. Correct. So, and again, thank you, Ryan. One of the things that he just mentioned is Screen Actors Guild actually uses this program to audit you. Actually, it's a huge thing. It's actually a great thing because of the fact that we've had um, our advocates there that have actually helped us make the program better. Um, if you've ever looked at the SAG codified agreement, it's huge. It's a lot of contract. There's some things that even sound very contradictory when you look at them sometimes. So what happens is, is we actually have been working with SAG and any of those gray area rules that were not so clear, what we did is um, we literally went to them and said, can you help explain that to us? And then we program that literally into it, the program for you so that you would pay correctly. So just so you know, there's a couple of tips. Uh, let me give you um, an, a big tip right here is you must make sure to do things in military time. OK, now that's the way the program works. That's the way the industry works with calculating your time cards. So go to reports 
go to cheat sheet and you can literally print out your cheat sheet. By the way, there's also key commands that you can actually uh, use as well along with this that are helpful in the program. Those who are used to the Showbiz Crew Cards program will find that Showbiz SAG Cards works almost the same, except this is designed specifically for SAG After Exhibit A time cards. All right, so. Yeah, lots of people, lots of people saying that they, they uh, you know, they're not used to the military time, having the cheat sheets very helpful. So that's good to see, Roger. Yeah, more, and any more of that stuff, people love that. I'm getting a lot of feedback on that with the questions. So any more of those bells and whistles you think of that make their lives easier, whether it be the rules and stuff, I think that's what we want to see. You bet, yeah. All right, so let's go to, and this is, this is one here. So if you go to, we're looking at Thursday. Now here is a more, um, a more friendly way to enter the information. But if you literally want to see how it looks on the Exhibit G, you can do it here. It's not quite um, as entry friendly, but you can still enter it here just the same. Um, the other screen, I, as you can see, if I'll, I'll switch back real quick. You can see it's a little cleaner, it's a little easier because it's very everything's lined up. But here I'm going to show you something that's really cool. So, for example, we do actually have, and if you want the characters to be in order, just make sure um, you put a number in front of them. If you have a three digit, go ahead and put three digits. Like if you're some, usually it's it's based upon these numbers. The character numbers are usually based on the original script. If you have a three digit, like you have a, somebody that's in like a hundred, just make sure you use a three digit, and they will stay in order like this. All right, so this usually, by the way, that's the call how the call sheet works too. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to actually use again that that uh, exhibit G, and I'm going to convert it for you. And and for those of you again, don't worry about if you're not sure of a military time right now, you'll get used to it. Use that cheat sheet, and it will help you a lot. So on uh, myself, um, I started at 10:20, so that's 10.4. Okay, then my start time is 11.30, so it's 11.5. And then my wrap time was 10.28, so that's 22.5. And then my makeup removal was 10.45, which is 22.8. And the lunches were 16, which was four o'clock. And then 4.30, which is 16.5. And just so you know, I'm going to stop here for just a second, because if you've entered it here, watch what happens when I go to the Exhibit G. It's already there. So I'll enter it nice. here to show you how it enters it over there. And I'll show you another place where it also, has, also entered it, where it's really very helpful for you to be able to do a time card. So 9.55 is 9.9. And let's see, uh, 10.20, so 10.4. And then leave location was 10.43, so 22.8. And then leave for studio is 10.08, so 23.2. So there we go. So I've entered it here. Now, now they've got it here. Again, this is looking exactly like the Exhibit G, except now we've converted it to military. Done. So now, let me, I'll show you when I go back here. It's entered here. So it's a huge advantage for you. Now, I would do it here. The entry, I think, is, is easier to do here, but technically it can be done in the other screen. I just think it's cleaner and easier to see here. But if you ever just want to go quickly check it, you want to look at your Exhibit G, grab your Exhibit G like I have right in front of me, and I want to go double check the numbers, you can do that, and you're done. Now, of course, I've cheated a little bit. I've entered the other times because we've only got so much time. No problem. What you're going to do is do the same thing as I've done. And by the way, this Exhibit G example that we gave you, just ask us for it, we'll be happy to give it to you so you can practice yourself because um, when you were first given your email, you, you're, getting, you're getting an email that actually has a link to download the program. Please feel free to download the, the trial of the program and use it. All right, so now what I'm gonna show you, this is great, but how does this benefit me, Roger? How does this actually help me in getting my time cards done correctly? Well, Showbiz Time Cards, of course, is an hours to gross calculator just like showbiz crew cards is so you go to worksheet and now i'm looking at i want to actually uh, i can go to worksheet list first i want to particularly grab uh, my time card that i just did right here take a look at it see i've actually calculated one out but that's okay what we can do is we'll go to the next one take a look at this one here all right so we can literally look at this we'll just pretend this person was a 
start, work, finish. And of course, everybody knew what that meant, true day player. But that's okay. We still have to look at a couple of things to make sure we get that right. Remember I told you about travel time. They actually had 0.8, a little bit less than an hour in their day when they're traveling. They were a double time, so now it's not being paid a double time. It's being paid a time and a half. That is a rule that is that's in that big SAG codified agreement that you don't have to worry about because the program does it for you. Now, of course, should you know the rule? Absolutely. Everybody who uses showbiz time cards should understand um, how payroll works and how it works um, to, to benefit you. But nevertheless, that's the thing. You don't always have to have the rules um, in your head at every time. The program will help you to make sure you get it right every time. Because there, admittedly, again, if you've ever seen the SAG Codified Agreement, it's very large. Scanning through it is very difficult and it takes a lot of time. So having the rules in there for you does benefit you because you need to get your payroll done as fast as possible, right? So watch this. So I'm gonna review it. I look at the times, I'm happy, I'm good to go. I just need to make sure I'm paying the person. So right now, um, I'm just gonna say they're being paid scale. If it's above scale, no problem. You can go ahead and pay them above scale. If you're doing residuals in the program, we do have a little calculator, by the way, you can put the above scale in there and it will help you. Um, I won't go over that now, but um, we can always talk to you about that another time, but it does have a calculator for it. So now I wanna look and see, uh, I've got meal penalties, right? I need to pay those. Um, I'm not gonna call in any beer grace, so I'll just go ahead and say pay. You know, it does automatically do it. It is on by default. It can be turned off for certain circumstances, but otherwise it should pay automatically. You click the button and bam, there we go. I just paid this person out that quickly because I already pre-entered all those hours. So now what do I do? If I'm happy with this one, I can go ahead and I can make sure to say, okay, this time card is done, complete it. And then I move on to the next time card. Do the same thing for the next person, right? I actually guess at the end of my list. Let's go back to, there we go. So there we go. Here's <coughs> another one. Again, we can say that they start work finished. That's fine. Actually, technically, they did work finished. So that's fine. They, they, they finished this day. Uh, no meal penalties. That's fine. Um, make sure we've got everything in there. It's just, yeah. They hit magic pay. Oh, sorry. We do, do need one thing. That's one thing I forgot to mention. Is besides making sure to go ahead and put in their scale rate, don't forget to put in something like their um, you know, um, their, their contract. So let's go back to here. I'll show you, for example, mine. Those contracts, Roger, you're, you're talking about the contracts and, and we're getting a slew of questions, by the way, and we're going to try to hit what we're seeing. I'll try to, I'll try to get a few of them in there while Roger's going through this. Cause I know right, so this here's, whole here's process. A little tip. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, the seeing the contracts, a lot of people are asking about that. Like, the information is on the back end, but can they see it? Well, it's all programmed, but you can choose the right contract. So here's the cool thing. Watch. Click on that, and you can choose the right time. This is critical. You must choose it. A lot of people say, why isn't the program calculating? You saw that other one wasn't, right? This is calculated, but you can always change it. So... I can say, you know, I'm a television, I'm a theatrical. There are different rules, and each one of these represents a different rule set that we've programmed for you, all right? So when you click a button, what it's going to do is it's going to load up that rule set for that contract for you. So if you come in here and say day performer, we'll say it's a distant overnight. Click on that. There's certain rules along with that. And then we make sure that we magic pay once we've done that. Oh, so I do have a meal penalty I have to pay now. Got it. I've got that in there. We've got a couple. We got a couple questions about the meal penalties, about how that's being calculated. Is that is that built into the rules as well, Roger? Correct. In fact, actually, if you want to take a look at it, it's a scale. Basically, there is a scale, and um, what so you know, basically, as I said earlier, a meal penalty violation is it's a scale that basically increases every thirty minutes. You do not give them a break. So you can see how it right. goes up, up and up and up. This is for this is the standard meal penalty um, um, rate um, for most most of your uh, television shows and features. This is for your ultra low. They give you a bit of a break because you have a lower budget threshold. Um, so yes, those are those. Um, and everything is, like I said, it's calculated at, at 0.5. It can be changed if necessary. Uh, it's very rare that happens, but 
there are certain rules that can be overridden. Also, what's really nice in here too is that we actually have the ability to go in and override every year the Schedule A changes. So for example, this actually now is 2060. Always make sure you go up and update the rules as 1400 for fittings. Make sure you update that really quickly. And all you need to do to do that again is just go, literally go to, sorry, report or um, go to forms and go to globals right here. And it took me right there. And now it's literally now been updated so that it's correct. And I'm now paying correctly for my money breaks because here's the key thing with money breaks. If you go over a certain money break, you get a break to production. Production gets a break for actually paying that Oh, that much over scale is what they call it. So now if I go back, now I can see see how it's you know I uh, have to actually go pick that out a pay schedule again. Always make sure to do that if you if you're making a change. So I'll go click on that. And now see how it's updated the money break in the schedule. So that's what that's essentially just make sure if you make any changes that you go and update it. We didn't change the meal penalties, but if I had, I just re-click on meal penalties and click on it and take care of it. But see now how I and that money to change things. I can go up there and say, look, they're being paid four thousand a day. Just click on it. What is the pay. difference? Yeah, somebody was asking about that. Like, you know, how 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 much they have to be invested with regards to the scale rate versus the negotiated rate. Well, again, the scale rate is basically that's a scale. If you, it'll actually, this is where you need to look at is the contract. Look at the contract for the for the performer. It'll say scale. If it's scale, then you can pay them scale. Currently for Schedule A, it's 1030. Um, if you pay them over scale, then there you go. I'm paying them over scale. That's the negotiated rate. And the negotiated will override the scale. So again, that's in Got it. It's whoever's negotiated the contract. They say, look, this person is being paid $4,000 a day, $10,000 a day or more. Whatever, whatever it takes to get that particular performer on that show on that day, that's what they have to do because they want that person to be on the show, perhaps, so they might have to pay more. And again, that's in their contract. Gotcha. And the the magic break, the uh, money break, you mentioned that, and some a uh, few people were were focusing on that. What is that again? Like the, the right. term money break? For example, a good example of money break here is uh, the current scale is 1030, 2060, is now the money break. If I pay over the money break, I get particular breaks that I don't have to pay anymore. For example, notice how the double time went away. It didn't, it's not no longer paid, it's just paid a time and a half instead. So that increased the time and a half for that person so that they get paid correctly. So it's a break. It. Essentially, that's, you're getting a break for paying them over the scale, which is double that the money break is really a penny over double scale. Got it. You and have to that is, the, just make sure you put it in the program and you'll be fine. Right. Because, and that's something we want to really showcase to people as they're asking about this is a lot of this. And I know Roger's going through this quickly because we have a, we have our, our time restraints, but, and for the sake of everybody's time, but a lot of this stuff is automated. So if you kind of, know the basics and know where you're going, you're able to kind of pull from different things. Um, Roger was just talking about going over scale. I'm getting a slew of questions, Roger, about overtime and and how much they have to be invested in that, knowing overtime rules or if all that's in here as well. Um, and, you know, where do they pull that information from? Is it just a matter of just, you know, clicking the button, putting in their overtime number, and it'll take care of the rest? I think people are surprised to see. It That's is easy. Actually, uh, it is all built in. This is a little bit different than our crew. Once you pick the auto pay schedule, so watch. Here's the day performer. I'm going to switch over to a different kind of contract. I'm going to go switch over to maybe a weekly contract, right? Click on Studio B. Because technically, this person really, you know, it depends on, again, did they start work finish in one day? Or are they a day player? Or did they actually work for a week? Notice how the overtime changed slightly. Depends on the contract you pick. Again, if you go to somebody like a Schedule F who's being paid a lot of money, those are your real big performers, they don't get any at all. They just get paid everything in straight time. So 
you don't have to worry about it. You just make sure the rules and the overtime are all chosen by picking the appropriate contract, whether your television, whether your studio, you're just an overnight, or you're at some kind of a low budget, you just pick the appropriate type. And when you do that, you can go ahead and pay appropriately with the rules engine, with the overtime and everything calculated properly. That's the nice thing about SAG. A lot of these rules automatically kick in for you and change for you as needed um, so that you can pay um, properly. So again, that's and, one of the things you don't have to worry about so much. You don't need to worry about so much. Yeah. Pick it for you. And, and speaking of automated and trying to save time, which is once again what we're trying to show people, this actually came up because a lot of the independents, especially that I, I'm working with in media services, you know, they're saying, oh, can I just submit the exhibit G's? And, and we can take that sometimes, but of this course. is still the best way to do it. It's going to just save you so much time. And, and I think what we're I'll getting a lot of questions about the duplicate card uh, option up there. People are curious about that. And I think that is just, the time saver, right, Roger, based on when you used to like hand break and do your cards every day when you were out in the field. I mean, this is right here, the the time saver right here, right? Correct. Another way we save you a great deal of time is once you've entered these times in, that's okay. You, you technically have to enter the information about the person. That's a separate thing. But why do you have to do it again? You don't. What you do is you come in here and you say, most people will say duplicate info only, or you can go in and do it as a batch. If I wanted to do this entire batch and just say, see how everything disappeared? It's going to a whole new week ending. In fact, the week ending is defaulting to a very unusual week ending. You're going to go to a whole new week when you do that. But what you can do if you want is you can go to reports and you can say mass time duplication and literally say, look, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to select all these check boxes i'm going to duplicate all these time cards i want to do info only again we can explain those different subtleties to you what, what the differences are but i'm going to do info only. and now it literally it asks me what's the new week i want so i'm going to say i'm going to jump ahead and go to the 20th right so i would literally say two slash 20 i do not and have to enter the year as it tells you here um you can change things about your production or your uh, the job number or anything like that if you need to um, the location, if you want to put that in, there are changes, right? You can do that. And now what happens is every one of these performers is now ready for a whole new week ending. You can go right back to now, if you want to, go right back to that G again. So go to worksheet, go to say Monday, and now you have a whole new week that you can fill out and start the entire process all over again. But as you notice, each one of these time cards already has all the information, it has the MPV rules. It has the rule. See, I even chose B and I changed it. It's that even state as well. The changes that I made to the um, negotiated and the scale rate, all that information duplicates from week to week. So it saves you an enormous amount of time. And then if you want to go back, you've done all this on this screen that you're saying, you know, it makes it very easy to input. If they want to go back and actually look at the exhibit G, view all of this should be feeding into that right that's correct just like we were before it's just all it is it's a different week so i just want to show you here's all of your time cards all you need to do is click find all and they're all back so you can individually gotcha. go back and look at somebody you've already completed before and take a look at it gotcha gotcha yeah somebody was asking that earlier if you go to the individual time cards and look at individuals um so, we're getting a slew of questions by the way it's, it's going to be hard to hit all of them especially some of the detailed ones or some great ones in here. So if we don't get to them, we're going to try to move into like a question answer section right now. Um, if we don't get to them in the next five minutes or so, uh, we will email you and, and get back with you directly. I, I assure you. So um, with that said, there, there's a few things that came up. I thought was interesting, especially nowadays. Uh, the contracts, uh, we saw a lot of different types of productions in there. But a lot of people were saying, what if we don't see one like everybody's seeing new media now, which I thought was a great question. Um, is that something that that they would just use an alternative or what, what, what should they do if, if it's not there? Depends on the new media contract. I have seen new media work just fine and some new media I have not. The basic thing would be to contact us and support and see if we can help you. Um, um, like I said, I've had some people use new media and have no problems at all, and it's been fine. 
but there are some new media that are they're more one-off agreements and they can be more difficult that we don't often do one-off agreements in the program um although gotcha. again contact us because we may be able to help you in one way or the other with that gotcha gotcha yeah support it's, is great and Roger, really you know, we'll have go ahead go ahead no, I was gonna say Roger's always available to, to to go through this. We'll we'll have his contact information up shortly. But um but yeah, if people have questions that are a little more detailed. Um speaking of uh digital being accepted, the signature. Uh somebody was asking about duplicating signatures. Do the actors, you know, you mentioned they signed that exhibit G, that, that original one we saw, that one that I had on my screen. Once you go through all this with the hours, do they have to like digitally sign that or how does that work no in fact this this is the beauty of showbiz time cards what you want to do reason why you want to use a program like showbiz time cards is yes you mentioned this earlier can you just hand the exhibit g to the payroll company and they can do it for you absolutely we can do that media services and the other payroll companies will do that however one of the best ways to double check to make sure your payroll is correct is by having more than one person doing it payroll accountants should double check and make sure. I used to do it in the field years ago. I would hand it right out. I would can calculate the time cards, and I would want I would want to make sure that's correct because you never want to overpay um, any uh, union actor because it's very difficult. A union person, period, um, because it's very difficult to get that money back. You just overpaid them, right? If you underpay them, they might file a grievance with their union because you underpaid them. Both of those scenarios are losses to the actual production. So if you go ahead and you calculate it here and the payroll calculates it, you should be right on the penny or very close to it. Um, that's why it's a beauty of showbiz time cards is you're literally going and you're double checking payroll, making sure it's correct. And instead of saying, here, let's hand it off and make sure that they're correct. Um, because in an audit, put it this way, I do know this much from showbiz SAG, SAG, SAG itself has told us this, when people use showbiz SAG cards, their audits are very low, if at all. But when they're doing it by hand, the chances are they're going to be getting a bigger audit. And sometimes they're really big audits, just because mistakes yeah. can happen. So that's yeah. why well, I mean, that's a, use this program. That's a selling point in itself. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a selling point in itself is to save time, not only on the front end, but the back end, avoiding you know, the audit, Everything with SAG, um, you know, making sure it's done correctly in every single way. Um, some people were asking about the cost of it and 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 um, how it works. So just so everybody knows, it starts at 4.99 for the program. But if you're a media services payroll client, you do get this software uh, free of charge as a payroll client. So um, we're still getting a slew of questions. It's 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 really going to be tough. I think we're going to have to email a lot of these. Um, a lot of people ask them this is recorded so they can go back. This is being re recorded. Uh, so we will find a way to get this into your hands. We'll email you guys. I uh, didn't get an answer on my question about the actor that, uh, <laughs> that, that caused a lot of, uh, issues with regards to, to SAG and jumping in. It was Boris Karloff, uh, when he was in Frankenstein and had to spend, you know, 25 hour days with his makeup. Um, so he was member number nine on the Screen Actors Guild, which is kind of crazy. Uh, but go ahead and chop that down your notebook as a, a fun fact for today. Um, other than that, Roger, do you have any closing comments? I guess we'll put our, um, about the software before we leave it and put up our contact information and maybe take another question or two. Sure, go ahead and take it. We'll take another question or two and then we'll, uh, here, just so you can see, that he's, this is our contact information. And um, also, if you just have general questions at any time, you can email our support team. It's just showbiz at mediaservices.com. So just put the word showbiz in front of that. And we have a team of experts that can help you, whether you need help installing the program or you just need help with um, making sure that you're paying correctly and you're choosing the right rules and stuff like that. We're happy to help you out. Great. Yeah, and they really are. Um, I can't tell you how many of my clients just speak the world of, of Roger and his team over there. That show this team is great. Um, a few questions uh, while they're coming through is do commercials, can they use the, uh, the the SAG time card as well? No, unfortunately not. This is actually for features in television. That's why we gotcha. sometimes have problems with new media. New media technically 
goes over to the, side, the commercial side. So, but again, it depends on the new media. Contact us and I can see if we can help you out because we might be able to. Got you. Um, they want to know if you could do all of that in crew time cards. I believe the answer for that's going to be no, which is why there's two separate programs because of all the rules. Is that correct, Roger? That's correct because there are specific rules in SAG that you um, would not want uh, to do. Now, mind you, um, the new media that does not work in Showbiz Crew Card, sorry, Showbiz SAG cards, you could actually do it in Showbiz Crew because oftentimes there's simple day players or weekly players that you can do through Showbiz Crew Cards. So that's why I'm, I'll give you a little bit of a hint that if we can get it to work in Showbiz SAG cards, we may be able to get those contracts to work in Showbiz Crew because Crew's a little more flexible. But yeah, SAG is very specifically designed for SAG and after Exhibit A. Gotcha. Um, somebody was asking about rehearsal days. I thought that was an interesting question and how that's, that's calculated out. Is that just, that would just be another time card for another day? It would just be seen that way? Have, we have there's certain rules. It depends upon the performer. Some performers, it's part of their contract. Some performers, like day players, are actually paid for it, and there's a minimum they have to be paid. Um, it's, we have it all built into the program for you. Great. Yeah, I mean, I hate to sound like a broken record or for you to sound like one, but, but we can say that for a lot of things, which is the advantage, once again, of using this program, is there's a lot of it, there's a lot of prep work that, that Showbiz has done, that Roger has done to save you time to make sure that you're able to do your cards correctly, feel good about it, feel good about when SAG, you know, would have to look at it and review it and not have a full auto blow up in your face or anything like that. So once again, this that's the advantage of it. Um, it's a terrific program. I would go as far to say it's the industry standard, wouldn't you, Roger? I mean, this is, this is being used on every show you're looking at on television just about. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what more to say about that, you know? It is the industry standard for tele for yeah. television feature time card calculation. And again, SAG uses yeah. it to audit you, not in the United States only, but worldwide. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I'm going to wrap this down um, just because of time. And, and you know, I wish, you know, we, we could have a bigger one. But once again, we have some time constraints. A lot of people are asking about, they, they're saying this was great. You know, could we do something about this with the crew cards? Maybe so, Roger. Maybe that's something we need to talk about. Um, but I, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. The questions, once again, this is being recorded. If your question was not addressed directly, um, we will get back with you and feel free to reach out to myself, to Roger, to media services, to showbiz for whatever you might need. So with that said, um, I'm going to let it uh, go. I'll leave this information up. Uh, for you guys to copy this down, take a screenshot, whatever you need to do. And then Roger, once again, thanks for your expertise, your decades of expertise poured into this, not only for today, but also when people use this daily. I mean, a lot of your input and what you've put into the actual software is, is great and saves people hours of time. So um, we can't thank you enough. Very welcome. Thank you. All right. All right, guys. Have a good one.